anyway, bye bye young sod farm. Holy moly, I've been waiting for like 15 minutes for quite enough atmosphere out here to get this question done. All right, let's do this question together and get this over with. I was going to post written solutions, but then I thought, uh, you know, we, I can talk a bunch of things out as I'm doing this with you. The, the gist to this question and the gist to the very last thing that you have to do in this course is the following. You have regular photoelectric effect where light energy is coming in, vibrating a metal, and then electrons are fired off of the metal. And the question is, what happens to that little tiny mass? after it gets ejected from the metal. That's where we're going from here. And this is where you can go back to any part of the entire course. So in this question, this one happens to be a question where immediately after ejecting, this electron undergoes a one dimensional collision with another particle. Actually, I should have drawn this straight up. It says in the question that it gets ejected straight up into the air. And immediately it undergoes a collision with a proton which is traveling down towards it. So there's a head-on collision, and this is where we're gonna start. Because uh, the idea is you can't do this entire question until you know this. You need to know the instantaneous speed at which the electron gets ejected off of the metal because you're gonna need that for the photoelectric calculation. And in this question, and only this question, we're gonna get this speed by analyzing the one-dimensional collision that it undergoes with another particle, in this case, a proton. So start this question without looking at photoelectric effect at all. Actually, this goes back to earlier in the course. We've got a collision between two particles, particle one and particle two, and the description in this question is that they join together and they become one particle afterwards. And then remember, when we did one dimensional momentum, you didn't, everything was adding, 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 adding through the entire formula. And then after you sub in a formula of MV for each one of the objects in this uh, collision, and sorry, sorry for being left handed here and blocking everything as I write, but oh, you're just gonna have to deal with it for this video and for all the videos that have happened in the last two months, but. Okay, I'm gonna fill in the givens here. The, now remember, the first particle is an electron, and that's the, that's the, I guess, the magic of being able to do questions that link back to earlier in the course. We know what the mass is of this ejected particle. It is an electron. It is described as traveling up immediately after being ejected from the metal, but I'm not gonna use that up, because remember, when you do, the unknown here is this. We want to solve for the speed of the electron after it's been ejected. And remember, when you do one dimensional mem momentum, don't try and put any signs on what you think your answer is going to be. Just leave it as an unknown. I'm just going to leave it as an unknown V1, knowing that the answer is going to be up, or at least it should be up when I do get a final answer. The second particle is a proton. Uh, 1.6, oh, this is such a pain, but writing it out. It's always a lot of decimals. 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And that particle is listed as traveling down. So I'm going to use a negative sign here. It's traveling down, so negative for down. <clears throat> traveling down at a speed of 500,000 meters per second. So that's the left-hand side of the formula. I ran out of uh, room here on the right-hand side of the paper. So I'm gonna put my equal sign underneath and just continue my formula. So on the, the right-hand side of this formula, after the collision, the masses are gonna to join together. So that uh, I'm gonna do on a calculator right now, 9.11 to the exponent negative 31, added with the proton, 1.6726 to the exponent negative 27. Okay, so they become one particle. And actually, it doesn't look very different than what a proton was before. Protons are so much heavier than electrons, that if we combine these two particles together into one, the the decimal is still 1.67. So I'm not gonna round anything here. And the speed after these two combine is given, it's still traveling down, it's described in the question as traveling down, 
and it's been slowed down a little bit. It's now traveling 499,638 meters per second. So I really don't want to round anything in this question. Okay, so we're isolating for this, V1. Uh, I'm going to leave the details of that up to you. I'm going to do it here on the calculator without writing out anything else. But I really want to watch these signs and make sure that I get them all in. And I don't want to round anything because the numbers in this question are specific enough that I imagine the answer is going to be very specific too. So I got my right hand side done. I'm going to bring this over and add that on. 1.6726, the exponent negative 27 multiplied by 500,000. Okay, and I just have to divide by my um, electron mass. 9.11 to the exponent negative 31. Okay, so I am getting a speed of, a final speed of 164,995.59, I'll call it 0.6 meters per second. That sounds right, it's in the ballpark. Electrons get ejected very, very, very fast, even with tiny energies, and I've seen enough answers to know that that's probably a good answer. Okay, so from this, you could calculate the kinetic energy of the electron if you want, but then you're kind of doing things in all tiny little steps, or you could write out a big long formula and rearrange and solve. I don't know. Maybe I will do it this way. Let's, let's solve for the kinetic energy of this electron. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So one half, we're gonna use the mass again, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. Because remember, this, this answer here that I just solved for is the speed of just the electron. So doing the kinetic energy portion here, I'm going back to using just the electron. And I'm going to write the speed here, and I'm going to square it first, because if I don't write that there, I'm going to forget. 164,995.6 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's see how much kinetic energy this has. And despite that ridiculous speed, the particle is so small that this is gonna be an extremely small energy. Comes out to 1.24 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. Okay, so now let's look at the actual photoelectric effect. Same thing as always. In the photoelectric effect, you're going to have photon energy coming in, light energy coming in. It's going to hit the metal there's going to be a, an absorption of some of the energy by the metal. That's called the work function. And whatever's left over is going to be uh, kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. And I just solved for that value as a little part step. So kinetic energy is already solved for. Work function is actually what we're looking for in this question because it doesn't tell you what type of metal it is. And photon energy, you have to sub in a formula for that, depending on whether you're given frequency or wavelength. This question said that we're dealing with cyan-colored light with a um, wavelength. Oh, sorry, there was a typing error on the page, actually. I don't know if anybody caught this. It said cyan-colored light with a frequency of 510 nanometers. Boy, that must have really screwed you up. That should have said wavelength. 510 nanometers is not a frequency. It is a wavelength, so we're going to have to use HC divided by wavelength equals work function and kinetic energy. And you know, while I'm at it, before going any further, we're going to solve for work function, so I'll rearrange this right away. Work function is going to equal HC over wavelength minus the kinetic energy. All right, that's a lot shorter on the page. That's not going to be too, too bad to sub into. H is a constant, that's Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. C is also a constant, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We'll divide that whole thing by 510 nanometers, so make sure you express that right. That's 510 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And I'm going to subtract off the kinetic energy, which I already figured out above. 1.24 times 10 to the power of negative 20 joules. Okay, so um, I'm gonna calculate this, this first little bit. 
6.63 to the exponent negative 34 multiplied by the speed of light and divided by 510 to the exponent negative 9. If anybody did that beforehand, that comes out to 3.9 times 10 to the negative 19. That looks like a smaller number than the uh, electron energy, but that's just the way negative exponents work. Negative 20 is smaller than negative 19, even though it doesn't feel like it at first. So I'll subtract those two from one another and it will be a final answer. So the final answer comes out to 3.776 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And of course, that is the correct answer, but if you try and look that up in a chart, you're not going to get anywhere because they're always listed as electron volts. So convert that into electron volts, use the conversion factor, divide by 1.6 to the exponent negative 19, and you get the final answer to this question without any decimals. I'm um, sorry, I mean there are decimals, but it's exactly what I just wrote. That is that is the answer on my calculator, 2.36. And then if you look on the sheet and compare it to different metals, you'll find that it is, uh, oh shoot, I forget, was it calcium? Calcium or cesium? I forget. Uh, or was it sodium? Oh my god, now I really forget. My chart's inside. But anyway, 2.36 matches the value that's at the very, very bottom of the chart, and I can't remember now what it was. So don't write that down as a final answer. You'll, you'll have to take a look. But yeah, make sure you get 2.36. Okay, so the only thing left for you to do in this course is quiz number two. And what quiz number two is going to be are questions like this one. So they're going to be questions involving what you did this week, photoelectric effect, but each of the questions is going to tie back to something earlier in the course, such as this right here. And you don't always do the questions starting with uh, what was earlier in the course and working backwards to some photoelectric effect answer. It could be the other way around, starting with photoelectric effect and solving for something earlier in the course. There are going to be four or five questions posted, but they're, they're lengthy questions, of course, because of the multiple steps. So you only have to do two questions, and I'll type that out uh, right on the quiz so that you know. So the quiz is going to have multiple uh, choices, and if there's any particular section of the course where maybe you don't have any notes left and you absolutely don't remember how to do it at all, then fine. You can pick two questions that you do remember how to do. Um, several of the questions will be from COVID, from what we did since you were on quarantine. So you'll definitely have choices. Um, neatness is going to be marked a little bit more stringently on this because they're multi-step and you really have to sort of show what you're doing. You don't have to explain anything, but make sure that your formula format is uh, nice and your steps are, are shown well so that there's no confusion how you're going about getting your final answers. And uh, that's it for today. So I'll get that posted probably within um, the, the next couple hours. You don't have to do it today. Um, actually, you don't even have to have it handed in by Friday, but you might as well. I mean, it's the very last thing that you have to do. So you've got two questions to do to finish off this entire course. Uh, get them done right away if you want, or if you're overloaded with uh, Madame's French work and whatever else. You know, get them in as soon as possible, but don't forget and don't take too long because why drag it on now? You're absolutely done. You've got two questions left.